Yes. All right. So my premises are these. Number one, Vancouver is going to save the world. And you're not going to believe me on this. But the second one is that the future is not fucked, and neither is your pocketbook. And the third one is you can actually go home and do something tangibly to solve the problems of the future. So these are the three implausible truths that I'm presenting you today. So the first one is, why is Vancouver the international hub of the least appreciated cluster, not just in Canada, but in the world, for highly qualified personnel? And that is electrochemistry. And that is because of Ballard. Ballard is the fuel cell company that has magical ability to turn billions of dollars into hundreds of millions of dollars. <laughs> but, big shout out to them, they, after 120 quarters of failure, posted a profit last quarter. So, you know, big party. And the second is that we had the best institute for fuel cells and electrochemical applications in the entire world until three years ago, until the Harper government unleashed the desolation of smog upon it. And that's where I come in. Not that I was the unleashing of the desolation of smog, but I was the grad student that was the transition between the NRC, Institute for Fuel Cell Innovation, and 40 labs at Simon Fraser University as the uh, dubious synthetic chemist in the whole crop lab there. So the whole crop lab does ion exchange membranes. And ion exchange membranes are sheets of plastic. So my demo is really, really boring. It's like, this is a sheet of saran wrap, and here's a fancy sheet of saran wrap. <laughs> so the ion exchange membranes are filters for positive and negative ions. So they have a positive ion. What do you have to negative ions. Yeah, we need these. So, the important thing is this underlies all of what is known as clean technology. So I'm a clean technologist, and that is a wonderful euphemism for someone who used to be a synthetic chemist, who actually became an engineer, who actually then joined the dark side and started a company. So, yeah, full dark side, but I'm a clean technologist. And ion exchange membranes underlie clean technology, and clean technology is water and wastewater treatment. Clean technology is all the battery technologies that you can name. Clean technology is fuel cells, and fuel cells are better than batteries. How will these revolutionize the future? They are cost effective today. So what did you pay the last time you filled up your gas tank? $91. Too much. I paid $1.40 per liter. The long-term price on today's technology by the Department of Energy is 43 cents a liter. For hydrogen gas, equivalent to a liter of gas. You can drive your fuel cell car for as many kilometers as you can drive your gas car, and you can fill it up for 43 cents a liter today on today's technology without subsidies. And you know what? Through the NRC IFCI and 40 labs, we cut the important part of fuel cells, which is the platinum. There's 40 grams of platinum in a stack. We cut it down to 4 grams and got the same power density out. 10 times the number of people can get fuel cell cars, and that's the limitation. It's not the technology, it's literally the fact there's not enough platinum in the world. We cut it in 10, and it's the world record. It's never been a great record. There's a second technology called anion exchange membrane fuel cells. doesn't use platinum at all. Everyone can have one for cheaper than their combustion engine. It has a better value proposition, and that will be on the ground within four years. Elbit, which is the Lockheed Martin of Israel, has gone in with the Tier 1 uh, car company and they are planning on building a million cars within four years, and they want us, my company, Ionomer, to supply them with their membranes. Because we're on the basis of two 30-year breakthroughs in the field in ion exchange membranes, and these breakthroughs are super boring. But the important part is that you can put it in the middle of a battery, and in the middle of a battery, it's basically frying something on a grill. The way you cook your bacon, that's what's going on in the middle of a battery, in the middle of a fuel cell car, in the middle of the most advanced water treatment technologies today. If you can boil ours, for 10 times longer than the current standard, and it stands up and it performs better at the end of that than the other one performed at the beginning. So these are the breakthroughs that we're making. We're making them here in Vancouver. The other thing is, we have a special opportunity in BC. For all the bad that the Liberals have done, they invested, 80, they invested $80 million directly in companies. Every other investment in clean technology has been in funds of funds of venture capitalists. And this does shit off for anyone, and it makes me angry. <laughs> all right? They invested $80 million in early stage companies to kick stuff out of universities. SFU is now the Waterloo of the West Coast. You can take your invention and kick it out the door into a company. We have the best deal in Western Canada for the company I've created. And the final thing is, Rajiv Baines, Minister of Science, and the MP for Burnaby North, Terry someone or other, 
<laughs> you can write to these people and they will listen to you. Say, do what you're doing. Support SDTC, the Sustainable Development Technology Canada. They're the ARPA E of Canada. ARPA E was cut by Trump. Fuck them! <laughs> we can do it for Canada. We can do it with the resources we have. We can do it with one tenth of the resources and get it done tomorrow. So thanks very much. All right.